I am paradise. I am hell. I have no ambition. I have one ambition. I want to steal fire. I want to use my private, basic language on you. I want to catharsize all over your beautiful, beloved face. You organized this violence. I want to fuck you like an animal. I want to macerate you, absorb you, and metabolize you. I want to make you cry. Like a miracle. In the miracle I was real, and I came out from the miraculous underworld with miraculous x-ray eyes with which to see. Are you receiving my open eye signal? Tell me the ending. I want to be told. I will not be a woman any longer. John Kramer grabbed my arm, running up the terrazzo stairway between biology and history, and pushed his knee between my thighs. Girls like you get into trouble. He said. Pushing through history, through biology, to create a vector to spin completely out of control on, a gash for us all to lull complacently, to luxuriate in a basin of unendingly replenished, absorbing viscera at its bottom. A point of reference, a coordinate for a base meta level algorithm that will both determine the excavation site for genomic data and inform the enactment conditions for the Algeolux II. They are sophisticated, non-monotonic logic, therapeutic AI that self-generates empathy faculties from simulating both typical and exceptional trauma narratives. Daytime. There was a sincerity there at some point. Behind the curve of the station wall, there is a common shrub with small yellow and pink flowers that smell of piss when you crush them between my squeezed sweaty fingers after I give you and your little brother unfairly negotiated monotone blowjobs. It means nothing to me. I perform under pressure. To me, your organs are dismembered. Frankensteinian, bleeding, dying brutes. I will not use your language again. Many years later, I sent a letter to your childhood address. I wrote to tell you that I got hit by a truck. It was true. I broke my hand in two places. I didn't make a big deal of it. I told you that it was my right hand. It was just so you know that I was able to be delicate. My body could be broken. And it was context to announce that I was still masturbating with this hand held tight in a flesh tone splint, even though it was broken and it hurt badly, particularly when I was about to come and had to move it faster and harder to keep up with my looming climax. I wanted to tell you about my masturbation to show you I was free and desirous. That where I maybe lacked the looks that you felt so entitled to, I would make up for in promiscuity and a bottomless eagerness to please them all. And also I wanted you to know that I was extremely tough 
tough enough to endure your violence, not afraid of pain in the search for your pleasure, and that I obediently extended this invitation to be destroyed to you, that I granted you unreserved access to obliterate my humanity. Say something. Sometimes I hate myself. In the topological excitatory simulation process, the subject gets up, runs, falls to the floor, crashing heavily into the wooden floor which erupts into a starburst of splinters. Then she gets up and performs the sequence repeatedly, getting more and more disfigured, more and more bloody, pulpy and unidentifiable. It is you, my love, you who are the stranger. It is she, my love, she who is the stranger. A purple ohm printed on a tiny square of paper in the velvet cradle of night, in a borrowed car, candy wrappers twirled, and a baroque vision on the passenger seat. We marveled mutely at the conquest. Evaporating bone and the flesh ladder, slapping sounds erupted, and the sharpness of this unwanted experience. From the car window, hurt fell away from us quickly with the speed and lightness of carried horizons as we traveled in a neon hieroglyphic encryption towards the namelessness of psychedelic emancipation. Then, in the erupting patterns, I saw the beasts of the higher order. I saw suspended seraphim coming towards me on acid, on fire, neon six-winged and wild-eyed, burning up from the knowledge of their distance from absolute divinity. You and I held hands, hypertextual on the bare mattress, both of us wearing jackets and black nikes, portal to portal, and you rained fractals through me. Our terrestrial material bodies spat briefly into the spray of infinite celestial bodies. Our mortal bodies are capable of love and the pain of losing love, losing dignity, being humiliated, destroyed, which is where we reached our sudden and speechless end, where perishable, banal bodies and incomprehensible, divine bodies extraordinarily touch in an immutable embrace, a long kiss, deoxygenated and marine, dispelled and star-like. They coalesce in the uniformity of a space-time weave without imposed linearities that can only ever momentarily appease the anxious observance of this limited sentience of this sack of skin full of gore bodies that we love so much and lose so much in. The stump dully ruptures the lobe of the necromancer's organ, disclosing albuminous encrypted futures in the deep maroon of its vacid surface. At dusk, somnolent hemorrhage, the stump disengages, pulls away from this endless endeavor, resets procedures, and restores protocols. Tell me the ending. I want to be told. At the close of day, lonesome satellites spin dutifully in the melancholy spectacle of a puce sky yielding to indigo. I listen to a future sound of London track in my room at twilight, and it was so beautiful. I wanted to die to never be less in awe than I was then. Yes, I was truly thankful for being alive. This made here, this made now, and a capacity to hurt and feel pain 
that severs us from the tonal elusiveness of the everyday and thrusts us high into the light of a covert eternal knowledge of interdependency. Nighttime. When you returned late that night, I couldn't reach to open the door. I was pinned down by your unspooling duplicity and entangled in my inability to believe it. Floor ridden, squirming salty slug in a pale moonlit cup of interminable pain till dawn when again from behind the holographic vision field, the smoothly mechanized stump came forth and pushed cold, tentacular, crawling titanium burrows into the skin, circular blades removing perfect spheres of fractal flesh, falling away in a shower of confetti, mining into the atrophied meat to scrape out a hole of similar shape to the stump, but smaller, tight enough to assure the penetration of the stump is effortful and insufferable causes as much damage and pain as possible. Stretched massacre, aching flesh. A delicate balance is sustained between accelerated regeneration and its subsequent destruction to ensure any sense of respite or recovery or end is inconceivable and subjectivity is suspended in perpetual dispersal. Nighttime. You hold me gently by my full and gushing, convulsive cunt, vagina, pussy, sex organ, that softly murmurs directly to you, that I came straight from creation, from the primordial ocean, a long, long time ago, slippery, smooth skin, then legs forming from fins, emerging slowly from water onto land, across vast tundra and time, to this bed where this hand holds me now. You were so wet too. And when we came, when we squirted, when we vanished, and Feral moaned, and upon our return, I had a vision, the golden promise of the West, the idol of language. It was the end of the world dragging me forward by my wrists. How could I resist? I couldn't resist. I had a vision that I was neither master nor slave. You put three sticky, sour fingers deep in my mouth, feeling explicit structure of my skull in your hand. Cells regenerate in the cover of darkness. The socket heals at a prodigal rate, resets itself miraculously for renewed decimation at the very end of night that withdraws deeper into darkness just before the darkness retreats at dawn, kneaded again like soft clay into the earth. A tentacle snaking in the paradise of our childhood is a fever dream of our father fucking us in the ass in broad daylight on the Spanish Riviera on a brown leather couch in luxury in the study of a modernist building with a green tiled pool and two sickly peacocks resting breathless in the garden. I would not know how to be sincere enough to independently communicate the details right now. I would not know how to invest wisely in language right now. I would not know how to backpedal from syntactic ambiguity right now. Organic research. Oh, wow. On the white mulberry leaf, the silkworm secretes a sticky protein from its salivary glands, 
which hardens when it comes into contact with the outside world, twisting the filaments into a double helix, spinning a cocoon, an armor of its own secretions, its own expression to protect its vulnerability during brutal transformative processes which recalibrate violated subjectivities to emerge as pure transmission, velvety biomimetic gnomes. A tipped wine glass caked in burgundy sour powder and swirled sandy sediment. A geology, an excavation into a deep time that just will not go away stain that will not be washed clean. One thing I know for sure, I need to tell it to you. I can never safely love my poor, wonderful, lonely, terrifying, sad, dear, dead daddy. Below the undulant ebb of the last expandable and supple rib, a gash of torn capillaries, feathered nerves and disconnected connective tissue, an ill-fitting raw socket to a bleeding blunt stump, an unraveled titanium stump oozing synthetic blood, a high encryption patent, the socket, unintelligible spasm of plasmatic pain shudders from the tilt in the dusty sweep of first light, daybreak, high noon, from a perfectly placed blind spot, from lossless compression to the stump, pushes firmly into the tight aching socket. Titanium framework, bioalgorithmic flesh, cathardem, seeks to reconnect with painful organic material, reaping into flesh, fragile clotting, necrosed flesh, and forming granulation tissues seeks to borrow into this real fucked up socket and retrieve missing nameless genomic data for functioning cyber cybernetic hive mind. With rock in hand, I want to steal fire. I want to use my private, basic language on you. I want to catharsize all over your beautiful, beloved face. You organized this violence. I want to fuck you like an animal. I want to macerate you, absorb and metabolize you. I want to make you cry. Our conceptual dependency. You are my shroud of biases. Shroud of bleached sea silk so rare so fine that it can be folded into a matchbox and kept on my person at all times. God's eye may be on the sparrow, but my eye will always, always be on you. <laughs>